now we're on. <gasps> Look at that. Look at that. So this is my Celestron Nexstar telescope. That's like a sort of like a six inch, I guess. Uh, I've had it for many years. Uh, it's supposed to be able to take you for a little bit of a tour, uh, but um, this remote has always cut out on me, so it actually does work. It's driving, but the display isn't coming on. So these are about 150 or 200 something to replace, and I'm not sure if there's different models. But I'd like to take it apart. The backlight's working in it, but the screen itself isn't, so maybe it's just a loose connection. This scope's probably 20 years old. It's from Costco. Okay. Pretty straightforward. So you don't want to touch any of these ICs just in case you... Uh, static charge something and, and technically it would be a good idea to have a ground strap on as well which I don't but most of this stuff's pretty pretty good nowadays but so there's the ribbon for the keypad or maybe that's for the display yeah that's for the display as well You can kind of see that it actually looks like that ribbon is not all the way in. Let's just try and take a look at that first. So right here, there's a gap between the black and the white. That's how you remove the ribbon. Oh boy, look at how loose it is. Yeah, all the solder connections are broken. Okay. So all of these little connections have become desoldered off the board. And then two of them, it looks like, have been remained attached but come out of this sort of receptacle. Not that easy of a repair. So we have to actually get solder on each one of those, but not in between them. So we're going to need some some gear I don't have right now. But I think it's worth maybe purchasing. I've always wanted to have that kind of stuff. So magnifying glass with the light. And a really small tipped iron for doing that. So we'll look online and see what we can find online. Okay, so we got a little bit of a setup here. Found a new tip for the solder and iron. If this is a, a 30 to 35 watt non-adjustable temperature. I've got some electronic or electro electrical uh, rosin core solder silver bearing lead free don't even think that's really what you're supposed to be using we've even got a little bit of uh copper uh this this came out of a brake sensor i'm thinking i'm using this as the wick if you have too much solder and something you can use this to kind of pull it out so we use it like on this this guy here so it'll soak it up like a sponge so Hopefully, hopefully you can see that through the magnifying glass. I've taped the board, kind of lined up everywhere where I want it to be. So for flux, I have this uh, lead-free flux. I don't know. I'll put a little bit on the solder. much of an idea of what I'm doing. 
and just hope for the best here. So I'm going to start on this side. I've lined up the piece that I where I want it. There's already some solder on there. Nice if I had some smaller soldering wire. I don't want to get anything too hot on there. Let's see if I can get some on the tip. Hard to tell if you got it back on there. Got one eye closed like a pirate. Let's get a little more solder on here. Not too much. That's got a little bit of a wick on it. Well, I'm touching something, I think. Yeah, I'm melting that connector a bit. There's definitely a bridge. Most of these look pretty good though. Okay, let's try our little solder sucker, see if this works. A little wick. So you're going to the dentist. I didn't think I could do that. Holy cow. It's not pretty. I think it's going to work. I would have taken this connector off, but I was having a hard time with it, so I decided to leave it. Take one last look at it. Years and years this thing's been spotty and not working very good. This is this is it. How do I push this back in now? Okay, just want to make sure this is all the way in. more like it. Okay, that is just outstanding. Put this 
nasty little thing back on. I think we can button it up right now because we all know it's going to work. I've been trying to do some astrophotography lately and it's not easy to find galaxies and nebula that really don't show up until you process it after it. You have to make sure that you're in the right location. And this is going to help me at least find the, the location where it should be at. After you get it calibrated, I remember it being pretty good. We're back in over here. Here we go, here we go, here we go, fingers crossed. Come on, where's my display? Come on. You gotta be kidding me. Oh, no display. It's the motor, but Okay, it just came on for a second. Just gotta be real careful with this thing. I'll have to look for the box for this thing too because I think there was a way, maybe you can control it from a computer, like a laptop, which would actually work too. Okay, so. I'm just going to take some contact cleaner here and I don't like doing this but right in there I'll try and re-solder again Gotta work, man. Get power on. Oh, <gasps> look at that. Look at that. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Really? I don't want to touch it. deserve a beer for this. It's so clear too. So I guess my connection was not good the first time somewhere. Pretty good but not perfect. Well thank you to the article I read online about connections. This is so awesome. I don't know where that came from, but that's definitely a piece of a terminal. Mm. So, it says north and level. crooked okay north and level so you would drive it and then you would hit enter Canada the time all that good stuff can't wait to use it next time so again all we really had was a simple soldering iron 
with a tip that, that really is uh, about an eighth of an inch diameter at the back and works to a tip. We used uh, this Benzomatic Flux, a little tiny bit of electrical solder. This didn't really work, but uh, I am I'm super happy. Thanks for watching.